And we're going to take some time to reflect. And obviously, um, I was just thinking um, earlier that last year we had to close down. We had we weren't even to be together, be able to be together in Easter. Um, and so this is a really amazing treat. It's good to be together, not only physically but online. Um, and I know that this Easter is, as well is going to be an amazing time to be able to celebrate the most important time of history in the world. And that is a time Jesus came to the earth, died on a cross, uh, made an impact. I want to talk to you today really briefly, and I want to ask a question. What does a cross mean to you? What does a cross mean to you? You know, tonight we call it Good Friday, but sometimes I wonder why do we call it Good Friday? Because the fact is, it was a sad day. As we commemorate and we look back and we think about that first day when, when Jesus was falsely accused and he went to the cross, he could have changed things, but it was God's plan. See, deep down inside, we know that that's why it's a Good Friday. We know it's a Good Friday because without the Good Friday, there would be no resurrection. And without the resurrection, there would be no change or transformation in our life. The cross is not just a Christian symbol. Some of us grew up in homes, and the cross became a symbol that we would either put on a necklace or we would hang on a wall to remind us of Jesus, but it really didn't have much meaning. My question to you tonight, is it just a symbol to you or is the cross something different? The cross is not just a Christian symbol, but it's God's eternal plan that culminated with an eternal act of love by God that changes everything. It was an act of love. Jesus going to the cross. It was an act of love. For God so loved the world, the Bible says in John 3.16, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Notice it was a gift. See, love is not really love unless this action behind it. God took action and did something that if he had not done it, First of all, we wouldn't be here tonight. Our lives would never have been transformed. I would have never been at peace with God. I would have never had the joy of understanding my purpose in life. It's all because of that day. First of all, we see two big important days. Jesus came, first of all, we celebrate during Christmas. He came as a baby, right? He came as a baby Fully God, fully man, born of a virgin birth. But then we see that he now grew up, 33 short years lived. At the age of 33 and a half, approximately at that time, he was crucified and died on a cross. But it was no surprise to God. It was no surprise to the people of God. It was no surprise to the people of faith because God had foretold. Usually when God does something, he foretells it. He prophesies about it. He used men to prophetically speak into the future, the will of God and the purposes of God. But the question is, what is your view of the cross? How do you see the cross? What is your view of the cross? The Apostle Paul had a view, and he completely in his writings, in his letters to the churches, he spoke very clearly about the cross. Listen to some words here, 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. There's two options here. The Apostle Paul said there's two options. Either, either you're a person that views the, the cross and the symbol of the cross as, as basically foolishness, like what are those people doing, like why do they talk about the cross so much? Why do they exalt the cross? Why do they look at the cross and say, man, that changed my life? Was he talking about, and when we say that, we're not talking about a physical cross. 
We have a physical cross here. That cross is a piece of wood. It did nothing for me. It has done nothing for me. But the symbol of the cross has much more uh, uh, patched onto it, doesn't it? It has much more inside of it. The cross is not just a piece of wood that Jesus hung on. It was the whole reality that without Jesus, fully God and fully man going to the cross, we would never be forgiven of any single act of unrighteousness or sin or wickedness before holy God. There's no way that we could be, have been forgiven except through that one act. And so it becomes foolishness to people who don't understand. Uh, the fool, the, in fact, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And so the reality is, to many people, it's foolishness. Uh, what we're talking when we, when we look at the cross and it becomes a symbol of life. But to us who are being saved, it's a different perspective, isn't it? We have a different lens. We see things differently. And what is the perspective? It's the power. The power is the word dynamite. If I had a stick of dynamite and I threw it into the room here, we'd all run, first of all. But the reality is that stick of dynamite would change the atmosphere and it would change things around. When the true power of God, and we understand the, the true meaning of the cross, it does something inside of us. It changes things around. It rearranges our life. Another thing the apostle said, it was in Romans 1, 16 and 17. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Gospel means good news because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then to the Gentile, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. There's nothing that you can do to be right with God. It's a foolish thing to think that we could just believe that Jesus died on our behalf, that he took our place. But see, that is the gospel. That is the power of the cross. And here's the problem. I could come to you tonight with a very fancy message. I could come to you with a message that is eloquent, and I could tell you, and I could tell you a story, and I could, I, could, I could spend hours putting together a message that would hopefully change your life. But nothing changes the life of a person except the message that Jesus came, fully God, fully man, and died on a cross, brutally died on a cross. And he did it as the Lamb of God. Why is he called the Lamb of God? Because all before in the Old Testament, they were always looking forward to the Messiah. They were always looking to the Messiah to come. The Messiah, the Savior. And they would sacrifice lambs. God instituted back in Moses' time when God brought them out of Egypt, his people out of Egypt. And they commanded, he basically told them and instructed them, take a lamb, a one-year-old lamb that was as perfect and spotless as spotless can be in a fallen world. But take that lamb and, and sacrifice it on this night, the night that I'm going to deliver you from Egypt, your Egypt. I'm going to deliver you from slavery. And see, we are all born as slaves into sin. Jesus came to set us free. He is the perfect lamb that took our sin on the cross. But what did he instruct them to do? Before they were leaving, they were have the Passover lamb. And they were to sacrifice that lamb. They were, they were to eat it that night, not leave anything with it. They were actually to take the blood and they were to put it on the door frame of their house so that when the, danger, the angel of death came, the destroying angel would come, he would pass over their house. Say Passover tonight. See, that is the Passover. That's the purpose of the cross. Jesus, like a perfect lamb, was sacrificed on the cross for our forgiveness of sin. See, like the Apostle Paul said, to some people, it seems foolish. To some people, uh, they don't make sense out of it. To the world, they say, whoa, that is crazy. I've never heard that before. Or they don't want to even stay away. Man, you're crazy. You're those, those crazy people. But then for some of us, as we have looked upon Jesus and trusted him. See, all throughout Scripture, you see God pointing 
all the way back. He's pointing to it. Think about this. When Cain and Abel, remember that? Or even let's go back further. When, when actually Adam and Eve basically fell into sin. They walked into sin. They disobeyed God. What happened? God came looking for them and he said, listen, where art thou? Did he know not where they were? Oh, he knew where they were. And you know what he did? The first thing that he did? He took an a animal and he sacrificed an animal. God killed an animal and made clothing for them. He covered them. So right there you see blood being shed to cover their nakedness. See, before God, our nakedness of sin is seen. You think that we can hide, you can hide anything from God. You and I cannot hide anything from God. He knows our thoughts before we think them. He knows our words. He knows our motives. He knows the intentions of our heart. He sees everything. But he's perfect in love, and he comes to us, and he says, listen, I came and died on the cross. See, even... Let's go right now to the story itself, the narration. I would say not just a story because sometimes we think of a story, we think of it just as a story. Ah, oh, that's a story. That's a fairy tale. But let's go to the narrative. In Luke 23, verse 32 and also 39 through 43. And we see the actual moment that Jesus had been crucified. And he happened to be crucified with two Criminals, who criminals, they deserve to die. And you see this playing out where you see some people see it as foolish and some people see it as the power of God unto salvation. Listen to the verses simply. I'm going to read them really quick. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. See, one made fun of him, mocked him. In his foolishness, he could not understand the power of the cross. On the other side, you could see the one criminal look to Jesus, and he rebuked the other guy, and he looked to Jesus in faith. And what happened? Jesus gave him a promise. Today, you'll see me in paradise. I can imagine when he went through that moment of death, when they came, the soldiers came and they broke, just to speed up their death, they broke their legs of the criminals. They came to Jesus. He was already dead. So they broke the thing. And imagine that moment, that moment that he breathed his last breath, and there was death. Death means separation. And, and his body was left hanging on that cross, but his soul and his spirit went to be with God Almighty. I can just see their reunion right there. <laughs> and it was momentous. It was like this. Immediately in the presence of the Lord. Think about that reunion. See, death we fear many times. Don't fear death. My friend, you know why? You should only fear death if you do not trust Jesus Christ for everything in your life. Two eyewitnesses with two different responses. See, the crucifixion was an execution for criminals. These two criminals on each side of the cross had contrasting reactions as we've talked but see, you are either following Jesus or forsaking Jesus. You're either going towards him or running from him. What is it? What are you doing? But has the cross been powerful enough to put your, 
to turn your life around? Has, have you found the meaning of the cross? Why do we gather for Good Friday? Because we remember with an incredible gratitude to what Jesus has done for us. But see, I, don't, I believe this, that if you and I don't really understand the gravity of our sin, we can never understand the greatness of his love and forgiveness. When you And I need to understand God's holiness before we can understand how sinful we are. Let me give you an illustration. Have you ever gone spelunking before? Caving. Maybe I said that wrong, word wrong. I don't know. But spelunking, I think it's called. I went spelunking one time. Or spelunking? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Looking at my wife to see, okay, she's okay. Is there, okay. <laughs> when I went spelunking, I, you go on this dark cave. We had flashlights, and you can only see dimly. We don't see clearly. And you're walking through all this mud and you're going through water up to your waist and you're muddy and you're sweaty and it's hot and you're walking around and you're trudging around and everything's wet. Your feet are wet. Your socks are wet. Everything's wet. And you're trudging through it. You don't even realize how dirty you are because you can't see. I mean, all you see is Bailey. You don't see clearly, but you're dirty. Until you come out of that cave and you see yourself and see others in the light, you don't realize how messed up you really are, how much you really need a cleansing. And I believe this. Jesus cleanses the soul like nothing else. He forgives us, cleanses us. And I don't know about you, but when you realize that you've sinned against a holy God, and you, the gravity of what that means and that if you do not turn to Jesus and you do not receive his forgiveness and you don't trust him completely and only in him put your trust, what can happen is you can go into a despair, go into an eternal separation from him. My prayer is that every single person listening to this message tonight would put their trust in Christ alone and also in the cross that we we look at and we say, thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the sin that you bore because it was our sin. Let me put it this way. It was your sin, my sin, that crucified Jesus. We think all oh, those Romans killed Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. Our sin, my sin, your disobedience, my disobedience, your rebellion, my, your, my rebellion against God is what crucified him. It was your sin and my sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. It's not until we are able to face the fact that we are sinful and need to die that we are able to experience a true resurrection. My prayer tonight, and we're going to partake of communion because this is remembering that moment that Jesus took our place. It was his blood that was shed. It was his body that was torn. The Bible says... He was torn beyond recognition. Even years before it happened, the prophet Isaiah foretold it. That he would be beaten beyond recognition. That people would see him. They wouldn't even recognize who he was because of the beating that he got. And why did he do it? He was fully God. He could have stopped it at any time. But his agony in the garden when he was communing with the father what did he say father if there's any other way let it happen nevertheless not my will but your will be done and God had a perfect plan to come to this earth to die on a cross so that you and I could be forgiven cleansed accepted adopted into his family. In fact, listen to Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and I'll close with this before we jump into communion. It says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, and I'm going to include daughters, 
God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba means daddy. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Is there something to celebrate tonight? Isn't it Good Friday? So I'm going to invite us to stand, and we're going to, I'm going to invite the worship team to come out.